working on a inline preheater. Doing some work for Tom the blueberry farmer basically. I want to hook him up with more power. What we're looking at here is the steam machete which is a steam gun that I built that has many uses. Today we're focusing on organic weed management and what we have here is a little setup that I've built for Tom this component specifically. This is basically just a heating element for a hot water heater, a 2000 watt heating element that is about a $10 part. This whole part, just this section right here costs about $30 to make and it is a 2000 watt inline heater basically. We have our garden hose, we have the discharge which is equipped with a thermal couple that is connected to this 160 psi pump and the power output of this inline heater is controlled by this triac circuit this is just kind of a breadboard configuration we're just going to see how things work eventually it will all be boxed up this and the power output meter included so that um, you don't just have all this stuff scraggling around but i just want to get a look at its performance today see how much more power we can crank into this thing we're low on propane, but I think we've got enough to get the experiment started anyway. Unfortunately, the pump is not doing its job, but we're going to get some good footage anyway. Basically, what I'm spraying here is some differential oil mixed in with wood ash. I used ashes to clean this mess up, and it leaves a very powerful grime. Now, I could use a pressure washer to clean that up, but it splatters the stuff all over the place. This is a far cleaner way of doing it. I'm also testing this device on organic weed management. We're getting a lot of steam off of this thing and it's extremely hot outside and that makes a big difference because a lot of companies will intentionally do their display out in winter because steam looks different depending on the temperature outside. More crisp view, better camera. If some of you are just getting on board here essentially what we have is a monotube boiler that consists of three elements you have the preheater the main boiler and inside of there we have a superheater coil which is the discharge portion of the burner the superheater coil helix stops at about this point inside the unit And basically what you have here is the Zeus torch, which is a compressed air assist blow torch. It puts out uh, an incredible amount of power. It puts out enough energy to braze quarter inch steel. A little souvenir I hang on to there. It brazed all that together. And it puts out more power than this rosebud as far as temperature goes. This right here, I believe, was in the 2100 degree range. The Zeus torch can hit above 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't have a thermal couple that goes over that, so I don't know the exact temperature of that torch, but it maxes out a 2400 degree thermal couple. Okay, so essentially the pressure cutoff switch is going haywire. Then things ain't working right. So we're gonna have to disarm the cutoff switch. We pretty much ran out of propane. Our output temp was only 90 degrees on that. And uh, It did cut through this grimy, super sticky grease without any soap and with very little water. 
That stuff is just nasty. Some of this is paint that's on here. So in this test, I did not bypass the pressure switch, which is something I typically do right off the bat. And this time I didn't, and it pretty much cost us. We ran out of propane anyway. Everything else seemed to perform okay. Um, the pump was giving us so much issue, we couldn't really get things dialed in properly. So the test was a failure in a success sense, but we did learn a lot. I know what I gotta do with this pump now. Once again, I'm battling the pump scenario. I may have to build a more complex pump to give us the flow rate that we want and uh, the pressure we need. I'm just unable to hit that mark. It's, it's very hard to do. So this pump's cutting off completely all the time and giving us a jittering pulsation and just not working out as good as it could. The gun worked out great though. I'm into it. Okay guys, so we got some options on the table before we just go tearing stuff up and redesigning everything. What we're going to do is get another propane bottle for the next test. I am going to turn the preheater up to dangerously high levels. That way that pump can run a little better. Hopefully we'll get within a flow rate that's compatible with the cooling fan on that pump and we'll see what happens there. Then we'll tear it apart if that doesn't work. I got a feeling it won't, but it'll be an interesting try and maybe we can get some more footage on the functionality of the device. That's what I'm more focused on right now. The pump isn't the main premise of this test. The pump is supposed to support the test and it ain't doing it. So though that may seem like it's a major constituent of this particular test, it is not. We just want to try and see how much better we can get the, the handheld unit to work. So we got a couple of options here. We can do the bypass valve configuration on this pump where we have a T with a valve here and another valve here so that we can divert excess flow right back into the intake and adjust the output. We set the pressure inside the bypass reservoir and uh, we're good to go. That may be what this is going to take. I don't know if I want to cut the wires on this thing again. Every time I do that, then I break the pump. So. We're going to try and see what happens. We're going to bypass first. But if we break this pump, then from now on, I know we're not trying that anymore. What we're going to do is the bypass valve configuration. This motor is cooking itself, guys. And I know why. It's constantly running on and off, on and off. It's never getting up to full RPM because of the load we're putting on it. It's inevitably going to die like that. It has to be able to run at a specific RPM for the cooling fan to cool everything off. And we ain't getting that. So, <laughs> things ain't as simple as you think when you got them on paper. Which is why I don't put anything on paper. I just built the damn thing and find out what's going to burn up. Swap it out for something that won't. So, so the main goal being is we're going to chuck efficiency out the window in exchange for compact size. We want this thing to be as small as possible. I sell this, con this component separately, just the torch itself. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. To the video for that so you guys can see me checking how hot this thing can get and what it can do but uh yeah i also sell this entire setup here on ebay you're better off contacting me through my email if you see this video first and decide you want to purchase because i can give you a better deal if we deal directly because ebay is a lot more expensive than you think 